Hello friends, welcome to you all to the 14th session of the course. I hope you are enjoying trying out with the simulator various instructions that you have learned. And uh, let us start with a, a new concept though you would have heard about this in your earlier organization computer organization courses, but as far as uh, ARM is concerned I will talk about how it is handled in ARM. So, this discussion is going to be basically on interrupts and exceptions. Uh, in this section, I am not planning to cover how to write uh, inter interrupt service routines. This section is only to tell you about how interrupts and exceptions are organized and what are their related priorities and how to take the control to the interrupt service routines, ok. We will stop with that. And then I will come back after a few lectures on how to write the ISRs. Okay, so that will involve understanding about exceptions, about you know having a little bit more clarity on that. And then then you will be ready to really see a interrupt service routine, how it is written with a real piece of code, and then I will run it through to make the things better for understanding. Okay. Very good. So, these are the topics that we are going to be covering today, ok. First, we will see what are interrupts and exceptions and uh, how it is handled in the ARM processor. You would have heard both interrupt, you know, used these words are used um, without having a clarity on what is the difference between these two at times. So, I thought I will first clear the difference you know what is the difference between interrupts and exceptions ok. Basically both try to take away the control ok, if they are some special kinds of control transfer what I mean by control transfer uh, take an example a PC is pointing at some code ok which is in the code memory and then the processor is keep on fetching the instruction and executing it and if the if it encounters a branch either branch with link or branch it jumps to that location ok and then starts executing it from there. So, basically it keeps on executing what it encounters in the core memory which are some instructions which the processor keeps fetching and then starts executing that. That happens continuously every cycle when the processor is executing. Now, now, these interrupts and exceptions are some special kind of control transfer, that means it takes away the PC from what it is currently doing to some other place. Where do they take away? They take them the, the control ok to some other subroutines, which are called ISRs, ok, interrupt service routines. It is a short form of this subroutine is ISR, this is different from the normal subroutines that you write in your code which you access it using the branch and link label right. This label is a subroutine when the PC when the program counter encounters this instruction it jumps to that particular address and then it executes the subroutine there. What happens on after completing it, it is returning to the instruction following the branch by copying the R14 because branch with the link would have put the address next to this instruction into the link register which is the link register <coughs> it is R14. So, <coughs> this instruction automatically stores this address in the R14 the address which is next to the branch in branch instruction branch with link instruction. So, it executes this and then PC is loaded with the what is you have to execute this instruction ok it is not automatically done please remember uh, copying the address into R14 is done by the processor whereas, coming back to the place where R14 is pointing is done by the programmer. You can decide not to come back and ignore the value in R14 and then keep on executing something that is left to you. But processor always stores this value 
the where the control is supposed to come back in R two D. Okay, so this is the normal flow uh, which get disturbed using the branch with the link, and then the control goes here. But this is all done by the programmer. This is the intent of the programmer who decides how the program flow should go. Okay, this is what we saw in the control flow instruction in the last session. But now it is little what we see as interrupt and exceptions are also changing the flow of instruction, but some are intended and some are unintended. Okay, I will explain what I mean by that. Okay, and uh, some are under the control of the programmer when it is supposed to happen is the whatever you see here the BL instruction and all that it is known to the programmer because the programmer only has written and put a BL here and then when the execution is coming here the program is aware that this is going to be executed and it is the control is going to be flowing to some other place whereas when the interrupts and exceptions happen it happens at a random time you know when it is supposed to happen is not known to you. Okay, there may be some reason behind that. No, it is not arbitrary, but sometimes it is because of some error or some condition it happens. So it is that is why it's called unprogrammed. You you change the flow based on your program, then it is programmed control flow changes. Whereas this is unprogrammed because the when a reset is given to the processor, it's not under the control of the programmer. Okay, CPU's processor is here. Reset signal is here when the user presses the reset button and then the signal is generated, it is not under the control of the programmer. So, it can happen anywhere in the program, you cannot decide okay, when I am executing no particular piece of code, maybe from location 100 to 200, I expect this interrupt. You cannot say that, nobody can predict when this interrupts and exceptions are going to happen, but there is one. Exception to this logic, which I will tell you, that is a software interrupt, which is SWI. That instruction, there you can generate the in exception by putting an instruction SWI. Okay, except for that, everything is unprogrammed. Maybe this you can call it as a program because, as a programmer, you are trying to put a SWI, which is software interrupt. So through software, you are generating an interrupt. That's why it's called SWI. Except for this, okay. Everything else is unprogrammed. So let us see. I hope these two are clear to you. Now they alter who alter the interrupt and exception, alter the normal program flow to handle external events or to report errors or exception conditions. Let us see what do I mean by external events. Let me give you an example a typical. Uh, example where interrupts are used ok, you know that ARM processor has two inputs ok to refresh your memory, I talked about this sometime back when we talked about the processor ok, so the soft core ok, the soft core of the CPU ARM has two inputs ok, this is coming from an external world, one is called IRQ one is FIQ, what is IRQ? Interrupt request, fast interpret. Okay. Now, do not interpret fast interpret request means the interrupt comes faster, and IRQ means the interrupt comes slower. A faster means that does not this fast business does not correspond to the way the interrupts come, it is a way ARM processor responds to it. Okay. The fast interrupt request means this interrupt whatever is coming from the external world needs a faster response from the processor ok. What I mean by faster response that means let us say ok a timer is there ok, ok timer, timer is an independent hardware which is counting the clocks ok and then you have programmed the timer to interrupt the processor after counting some 100 cycles ok, it could be to so suppose one cycle corresponds to 1 millisecond in your real time uh, ok clock ok, after 100 millisecond every 100 millisecond ok, we want an interrupt to be generated ok, 
this is correspond to 100 millisecond another 100 millisecond gap now why do we need that interrupt see when the processor is busy doing its uh, no activities no uh, uh, executing instructions it doesn't keep track of the time there is a separate hardware whose job is in the world only to count the number of clock cycles maybe it is generated by another crystal and fed to the timer and when it counts that and then it interrupts the processor every 100 millisecond to keep track of some uh, timer count rtc you know real time clock maybe a 32 bit value okay uh, is uh, reserved for counting the time okay so it gets incremented every 100 millisecond so to do this incrementing maybe we can have an isr in the service routine and then timer is connected to fiq so when this particular 100 millisecond elapses this gives a signal fiq signal and then the processor whatever it is doing okay it stops the execution when does it stop after executing the current instruction okay let me tell you suppose there are pipeline fetch mode decode and execute so it is doing some execution let us take a worst case of some ldm okay you know that lower multiple maybe it has given you know we have given all 15 registers or 16 registers to be loaded from memory so it is busy doing a memory transaction with the memory using the ldm instruction it is transferring data ldm is into the processor how many words 16 words now the interrupt is raised arm processor if it serves the interrupt in the middle of transfer then it will lose track of how many how much of data is copied from the memory so what it does it completes whatever the instruction being executed come fully okay yeah, that means if it has to fetch uh, 16 words from memory it has to do that and then after that is done that execution is done okay there is some other instruction here some other instruction here but it ignores all of that okay though it has already come into the processor it ignores all of them after this LDM is done it jumps to some known location that is what we are going to see how it is going to be done that that we will be covering in this session. So to understand this where the interrupts come and then how exception happens this, this is the way interrupts are generated you could add a you could connect a timer a hardware unit maybe you can connect a, a serial port you know you are I will be talking about this in the later part of the discussion uh, class. So, which is connected to the PC, okay, through a serial port. So, this job is to receive your data, and then maybe every data it may respond, it may you know, uh, write an interrupt, and then the arm um, will respond back by executing the ISR. So, basically, whenever any external device needs the attention of the processor it generates an interrupt and then it is connected to the IRQ or FIQ input and then processor is already you know programmed to the way it is supposed to handle that interrupt and then it will do the job and come back and execute the instruction. So, what happens IRQ on IRQ request or FIQ request it goes to ISR executes ISR and then interrupt service routine and comes back and starts executing the next instruction as if nothing has happened. So, this control flow this flow of instruction though it gets interrupted in between it continues your ISR should be written such a way that it continues without any problem ok. What I mean by that let us talk about it later but understand the background of this ok. That is about any external events it could be a timer or a serial port but what is what do I mean the errors it could be that when it is fetching an instruction it is encountered an error that could be a fetch error. So, instruction is being fetched but there is there is the memory is giving an error back saying that you are reached the end of the memory ok there is no physical memory but you are trying to access beyond the memory limit. So, it depends on the hardware and then how memory is configured you know to which address it is mapped it all depends on those things and then a the memory system may respond back saying that hey, there is a data about while they accessing a data there is an problem or while accessing an instruction there is a problem. So, based on this a specific input will be given to the processor and CPU 
processor responds back by executing the instruction. So that is what is called exception conditions. Okay. Let us see more of this. So the, what is the difference between interrupt and exception? Interrupts are coming from the external world. Okay. It could be a reset given by the uh, no user, or it could be generated because of some irrecoverable error. This could be divided given by the uh, no peripherals. Okay. So they are all coming from the external world. External world means it is outside the CPU. Okay. Outside the CPU. CPU is uh, okay. We I can call it as outside CPU, or it could be outside the processor if the nomenclature is to be followed. Processor is ARM, right? CPU is with all the peripherals. So we cannot say outside the CPU because of our nomenclature that we call the ARM SOC, okay, system on chip. ARM is in this one, okay. All the peripherals are here. They may generate a IRQ inside inside the IOS SOC itself the chip you know the interrupts can come or the reset can come from really the external to the chip ok. So, any of this event ok anyway it is outside the ARM processor ok a signal is generated by them which is generates the interrupts whereas exceptions are the handy conditions detected by the processor itself ok. This is the condition detected by the processor which is executing the instruction. It could be a prefetch apart while executing an instruction, it found that the instruction is not there or it is an illegal instruction or the memory has given actually detected by the processor with the help of memory unit, ok. So, memory unit only will inform the processor saying that hey, there is a problem in the way you are trying to access the memory, maybe you are giving me unaligned address or you are giving me address which is not valid in my memory ok. I can only give you, you know I am a 1 kilobyte memory suppose and then you are going and it is mapped to some thousand to 2000 hex ok 1 kilobytes. If you are trying to access beyond this and then you are giving access to this memory it will give an error because there is no other memory which is mapping to that address or it could be a, a ROM sitting in the chip in your board the ARM core is trying to write into ARM of the ROM memory you know that read only memory only can you can read from the memory, but you cannot write into the memory by, by, by chance some error has happened and the illegal pointer is trying to write into ROM then the memory system will respond back saying that there is a data apart you are trying to write into me I am only a read only memory. So, this kind of different things could happen in the system ok. So, because of that there will be a error which is caused by the some instruction ok being executed by the processor that is why it is called processor directed because these are all generated by something which is being done by the processor itself ok. So, these are all unprogrammed ok I told you this is unprogrammed this is the whole all these are all un unprogrammed data about our undefined instructions they are all unprogrammed. Whereas, this is programmed suppose you have put an SWA instruction then this interrupt is generated as whenever the SWA is encountered. So, this is known to the programmer and if the programmer has put it intentionally in the program flow. So, it goes to the SWA service routine ok we will see what is done in that uh, later on. So, these are the different things about interrupts and exceptions ok. Now, let us see how it is handled in the process. Interrupt vector table is a new in which you are encountering now, I um, will tell you what it means ok. When an exception or interrupt occurs the processor sets the PC, PC was to be to a specific memory address based on which exception or interrupt has happened. The address is within a special special address range called a vector table ok. Assume there is a fixed uh, address location, the physical address location within which you know different addresses are given and based on whatever interrupt or exception has happened the particular address will be accessed by setting the PC value to that address ok. It is done by the automatically by the processor ok we are not writing code for that. The entries in the vector table are instruction that branch to specific protein ok. So, basically what happens you take an example IRQ has happened. So, let us give a you know arm SOC here IRQ is coming from the you know some peripheral 
Now, the infection currently the processor is executing this infection. Assume that it is a LDL infection for the worst case. Now, after the execution is done, see every after completing every infection, the processor is up, it will check hey, do I have any interrupts pending for me? Okay. So, it encounters it sees that the signal it looks at the signal at ARP and then sees that it is a you know it has become low. So, that means that in ARQ is some interrupt is waiting for me. So, I am supposed to run the ISR interrupt service routine. What, what will it do? It is the set of actions it will do, but after that, what it will do is it will go to the vector table and then to a fixed location, it knows that in this location only there is a a branch to the ISR ok an instruction actual instruction is put here. So, the processor is supposed to just access this address uh, instruction and start executing it then automatically the control is taken back to the ISR ok. So, that going to that location specific location is designed by the processor designer. So, that is fixed location. So, based on that it goes there. So, that is being done by the processor ok very good one second ok. Now, the memory map address 0 0 is reserved for the vector ok and then 4 bytes each for every instruction every interrupt. So, one instruction only can be put in 4 bytes you know that ok. When an exception or interrupt occurs the processor suspends normal execution as I told you and starts loading the instruction from the vector table. Each vector table entry contains a form of a branch instruction to the pointing to the start of a specific routine, which is an ISR interrupt service routine. Okay. Let us see how it is done. So, these are all the addresses, okay. 0, 0 is reserved for a reset vector, okay. Whenever a reset happens, the processor will come here and then access the instruction stored here which is can happen happens to be a branch instruction. Similarly, other other uh, undefined instruction if it encounters an undefined instruction or FWI. So, these are all the different interrupts and then these are all the different addresses where it accesses the particular instruction stored for, for handling this various vector you know interrupts and exception. So, you know that there are different modes in the processor. So, this is called supervisor mode this is undefined ok this is also called supervisor mode abort mode and IRQ mode and FIQ mode. So, what is the relevance between this exceptions and the mode please remember the register bank discussion we had let me recall that for you you know that there is a user mode and system mode ok. So, there are 16 registers and then you have a CPSR correct. So, this are all accessed by, access by the system mode or user mode ok. User mode is the lowest privileged mode and system mode is the privileged mode that it can change the mode bits in the processor CPSR, CPSR. by modifying this you can change to different mode ok. Now, you know the register bank right FIQ there is a register fan you can go back you know some set of registers are reserved here uh, in FIQ this will become visible when it is in the FIQ mode and there is a stored program status register SPSR. Please remember that physically they are these registers are there and these registers are there and this is also there in those modes ok. Though it is available all throughout the processor that it will be visible and you can access them only when you are in that mode. So, let me erase this ok it is too much uh, ok. So, maybe a small one R14 and R13 ok if you recall I want you to go and see this different modes ok. This can be IRQ mode and there are abort ok similar thing ok and then we have supervisor ok SVC mode and undefined ok. So, these are the different modes and different registers are available. So, so this is indicating that which mode the processor enters on receiving this exception ok. 
So automatically this is also modified by the processor and I will explain these things in well in detail, but this is only just a, a recap of the register banks you have to remember this you know for the especially to understand the abort and sections and all that you should have this register bank in your back of your memory ok. Fine, when exceptions arises ARM completes the current inspection I told you as best it can, what does it what do I mean by as best as it can. I will give you an example ok, um, I always like to have an interrupt when LDM is being executed because that is the worst case scenario and 16 registers are getting say loaded from memory to processor ok sorry this is the memory only ok this is the instruction so I am sorry 16 to CPU ok it goes to CPU. Now what happens uh, suppose if this accessing this instruction this data memory itself if there is an error ok. So, maybe halfway through it encountered an error then it cannot complete the instruction before the data about happens because while accessing this data only the exception has happened. So, it cannot complete the, you know I told you that when interrupt happens it will complete the current instruction in execution and then only come and res you know, respond to the interrupt, but that is not always true if it is coming from external world it is nothing to do with the instruction being executed then you could afford to do the completing the instruction and then come and you know respond to the interrupt which has come from the external world. But if the exception itself is due to the instruction being executed maybe a instruction fetch or instruction uh, data about you cannot wait for this to be completed because that itself is causing the issue. So, it will be immediately responded to ok that is what I am saying as best it can if it can complete the execution it will do otherwise it will immediately respond back. On receiving initial signal ok, suppose you are executing a LDM ok again I may example LDM is being executed you have the memory from memory it is transferring some code to the CPU ok, it has only transferred some 4 words ok from the memory it is supposed to access few more so that means 12 more. But the CPU is here right the reset signal has come ok somebody has pressed the reset signal imagine it could come at any time in the cycle. So, it could happen while just 4 words have been transferred. So, when the reset signal happens that is something to tell the processor that enough of what you are doing ok there is a catastrophe you have to reset the whole system now ok that means whether you are executing any important instruction or maybe you are executing some data of what or you are executing something uh, processing some timer interrupt does not matter. Reset is the most highly valued or highest priority in the that is why it is sitting at the top ok. So, by chance it is there because of the 0, but I will show you the priority list where the reset will be at the top. So, when the reset happens the current instruction is not completed it will not wait for this current instruction to be completed it will just come out of the execution and then start accessing the instruction from this location and then do whatever is that to be done on reset ok. I will tell you what is to be done on reset uh, I can just tell you some few things ok. So, normally the vector addresses will contain a branch to the relevant routine ok I told you, but though FIQ routine can start immediately what I mean by that maybe you will make it it will make them become clearer in the next slide. See FIQ vector is here ok end of these are the you know possible exceptions and interrupts that can happen and these are the locations where the, the specific address is reserved in the memory for putting the branch instructions to the ISR ok this will jump to FIQ ISR this will jump to IRQ ISR, but here if you see after one see the address you no know, IR addresses there is no reservation ok it, it could be used by anybody. So, FIQ I said told you this is a this has to be responded to faster. So, if you put a branch instruction it will be again flush, flushing the pipeline and then go to the ISR so it will take more time. So, you can start your ISR itself here in this location ok I will explain you in the next slide. So, that is the that is why FIQ is kept in the end so that you can start your routine immediately. So, this is the typical memory. So, I am giving the lower address here and a higher address here 
So all the lower addresses are reserved here. After this F I know one one C, there is no specific reservation from the processor perspective. So you could write the F I Q interrupt I S R itself here without jumping. That's what I mean by uh, writing it here. Okay. You can even have a code or data, anything stack or whatever. No, I missed the stack. So please don't think that only core data is there and stack is somewhere. Everything has to be within this limit. Okay, this is 32 bit address limit. So everything is in given in hexadecimal. So this is the maximum address that the ARM processor can access. ARM 7 TDMI. And uh, within this, uh, let me put stack also here. Okay, you have to reserve stack space also here. Very good. Now you understood. So, what is the in each of these vectors branch to this, branch to this, branch to different handler, okay, ISR or handler or a synonyms, okay, you can use any of them. Now, you may wonder what is this uh, no of sitting here in between. See, this is some backward compatibility. This is the uh, for the earlier processor when there were 24 bit addresses um, that supported prior to ARM 70 DMA, there was some. Uh, exception which was used for illegal address generation beyond 64 bit. So, it is no longer valid. So, you know, from we are starting from 70 DMA. So, please ignore this particular vector. Uh, this is not handled now, okay. Very good. Let us go to next topic. Now, this is a typical example how a code and data is, you know, uh, please remember that stack is also here, okay. okay. Sorry about the handwriting, it is actually stacked. Okay, you have to believe me. Okay, now vector table is here, vector table is expanded here. Okay, this is an expanded version of what is shown here, and then you could keep anywhere as a reset unit code, okay, or SCC the supervisor code, ISR, and then code and stack can be here, and FIQ ISR can start immediately, okay. So it is free. You can free to locate it. Now, how you may wonder how we decide where everything sits. You have to use the tools. Okay, the tools come coming with the ARM processor. Uh, not only the compiler and assembler, the locator, linker, okay, loader. All the tools are there, which will help you to mention where you want to keep any of them. And then you will be mentioning some OR, VR based on the assembler syntax. You may define. Exact location of where your service proteins or data should be sitting. Based on that, the linker will place them all, and then the code will run on the processor. Okay, so let us not worry about them now. Assume that it will they be taken care of. Okay, good. So this is how when an interrupt happens, the control comes here to the particular. Based on the see, you may wonder how does it know which interrupt. It is very simple. If IRQ is there on the signal on the input pin, then it knows that IRQ has come. If it is a input has come from FIQ, it knows that FIQ is generated. Or if it is a fetch abort, it will know that when memory is saying that there is an abort, okay, memory is giving back an abort, and then it knows that which cycle was going, whether infection was being fetched or data was being fetched. So it will know that it is because of which data abort or fetch abort, pre fetch abort. Or if uh, Undefined instruction is encountered, it will know. So, SWA is there, then it will know that it is a software interrupt. So, it knows which has caused this interrupts or exception, and based on that, processor comes to the predefined address and simply fetches this instruction and then gives you to the pipeline. Then, pipeline takes care of taking it back to the ISR and then start executing whatever you are writing in the code. Okay. I hope this is clear to you. Now, various types of interrupts, okay. Though I have explained something, let me formally explain that, okay. Um, this is the reset, okay, points to the location of the first instruction to be executed by the processor on this signal. It could be from because of on power on, okay. Please remember when power on happens, what is first executed? The reset, it generates the reset, okay, and then is the processor jumps to the reset location and then init code is executed after that only anything happens. So, the processor branches to the initialization code please remember on reset power on also the reset is generated ok or it could be generated internally by some security based on some observable error. Now, what is undefined instruction um, sorry 
So undefined instruction is uh, exception is raised when the processor cannot decode an instruction. So let me define it here only. Okay, assume that this is the ROM. Okay, where code is there in the memory. Okay, code is put in the ROM. ARM is here. Processor. It is accessing the code, giving the address, and then getting the code, and then executing them. Suppose if it goes beyond this, what happens? It will give a either a illegal. It will give a prefetch about. Okay. Or if suppose a memory is corrupted and then it gives an instruction which is not understandable by the processor, then also an undefined instruction exception is raised. Okay. Software interrupt whenever it encounters the SWA instruction, it uh, it generates the software interrupt. So it's basically used for operating system routines. So basically, whenever you want to call some fixed routines written by the operating system and the you can plug in the code here and then SWA will be taking that control to the SWA ISR. So basically if you want to transfer the control through a to the OS through a controlled manner then this can be used ok. Normally this is what how it is being has been used in the typical program. Now prefetch about I explained you earlier ok. Um, if suppose you are trying to access the area without, uh, so you may not understand what I mean by access permission. You will understand when I have explained you MMU and memory memory protection unit MPU. Okay, so till then please keep your uh, inclusiveness, you know, the background. We will cover it later. So there are some areas in the memory which can be protected by. Not to be accessed by the user routine. Okay, suppose you are in a user process, and you, as a user, we, are, we might make a mistake in the in writing the program, and then try to access the area which is not our you know within our limit. Maybe it is a OS area. Okay, OS code is here, or maybe OS data is here, and then through to a wrong uh, data manipulation, you are trying to access that. What happens? You may correct the OS operating system. So to prevent it the memory protection unit will be trying to see whether you have enough access permission to access this addresses it will be accessed only when supervisor mode is there if we are running it in supervisor mode it may allow you to access it how will you go to supervisor mode you will execute a SWA so SWA is a controlled mechanism to access the OS code ok. So if it is accessed using the OS code then the OS code knows how to access this data and what to do with the data OS data. But our user program may not know that and it may corrupt it unintentionally or intentionally. So to prevent it there are some you know memory protection unit and the other hardware units are there which will try continuously be monitoring what is being accessed and which mode the processor currently in is in and then whether it has enough permissions to do the job ok whether reading or writing. So based on that it may uh, give us a bot. So when this when the contents of that virtual address is not available so this is another in the case of where you have virtual memory ok so that memory is not brought into the RAM and then you, your code is accessing it then it will say that this code is currently in not in the memory it is in the hard disk maybe or it is in the flash. So it has to be copied into the RAM and then given access path to the processor to run the code. So this will also be clear when I talk about physical memory and virtual memory. So uh, I will give you the background if you are already aware of this you can understand what it means otherwise do not bother we will anyway touch on this later. So the actual abort is handled only when the aborter instruction is enter execute stage ok. So what I mean by that see I told that uh, suppose a LDM instruction or LDR instruction or SDR instruction something to do with the load or swap instruction ok. What are the instructions can cause these are the instructions can cause a data abort we are talking about prefetch here but uh, what I am saying is in the prefetch case suppose an instruction which is maybe you know one of these instruction ok. When you are accessing that 
when you would have got a apart actually when you are in the pre fetch mode okay that time itself the memory would have said that hey, i am not able to access this uh, insert me or insert in but the processor knows that there is a abort pre fetch abort has happened the memory has given the error when i try to access this instruction but it will not write the it will not execute the abort isr or the exception handler in this case in here is in this clock itself please remember it has happened in the pre fetch case okay currently some instruction is getting executed here okay e this will not be affected okay it will carry on and then the decode in this what it will do the processor will make this as a invalid this instruction is invalid and then some pre fetch instruction a exception has been caused in when i was trying to access this instruction it will leave that information along with the instruction so through the pipeline the registers it will pass on that information okay so this instruction will be executed the previous instruction and then the uh, the previous, you know the instruction be after that you know will also be executed and then when this comes here then only the exception happens you may wonder why it is delayed anyway i know that it has happened here why should i delay it uh, you think it over maybe i will ask this question and then we will clarify that why the pre fetch abort has to be delayed please remember if you don't understand this i will explain again pre fetch abort is what it is a happens when the pre fetch this pipeline i am drawing okay please remember this is a pipeline this is a fetch mode fetch stage and decode stage and execute stage pre fetch abort happens when i am trying to access an instruction okay let me explain you a set of instruction being executed currently the pc is executing this instruction but when this was accessed okay the abort has happened see assume this is 100 again or not 4 and 108 when it was accessed 108 the pre fetch abort has happened so immediately it won't be generating an abort what i mean by generating an abort going to the abort handler accessing that particular vector table and then going and executing the isr okay the data of a pre fetch abort isr it will not happen immediately here so it will complete this execution successfully if it can and then this will move here this will move here but it will indicate that this is invalid don't try to execute this instruction i uh, encountered a problem when i try to execute you know fetch this instruction so please when you get a chance to execute this instruction call this isr pre fetch abort isr so when this instruction 104 comes here it will also be executed and when this 108 comes here immediately the abort will be raised okay think it over why it is delayed i will explain you later now data abort okay data abort when is when can it happen when you are accessing a data when will you be accessing a data will it happen in the pre fetch will it happen in the decode or will it happen in the execute stage please think it over when will the data abort happen okay suppose i said when you are doing a ldm instruction a yeah, data abort can happen okay but this ldm instruction can be in three stages right yeah, given an instruction it will come to you know uh, pre fetch stage and then it will be in decode stage for some one clock and then it will come to execute when will the data of what happen actually can it happen here here only the instruction is getting executed actually data is not accessed please remember accessing a instruction is different from accessing the data this ldm instruction itself is access here but actual data transfer happens when will it be in data mode uh, sorry decode mode it can't be decode mode only gen you no know, generates all the decode signals what is required for the execute stage to take care so actually when ldm comes here when it gets executed that time only it is actually going and doing what is requested by the instruction so it says i have i am interested in accessing some registers or no some memory either i want to write into the memory or read from the memory something i am telling in this instruction so the processor is going to do that and during that time the data abort can happen so data abort can happen only when the data access happens and data abort can access can happen only in the execute stage of which instructions tell me what are the instructions can cause data abort oh 
Oh, very good. LDR. Can SDR have also can generate? Of course, it can. It can be a LDR is a read about read from memory. SDR is a write to the memory. Can LDM and SDM can cause the data about? Of course, it can pass. Can you think of some other instruction apart from these four? Okay, if you have it in mind. Do you think this can cause a data about? What does it do? Swap. Swap does the exchange of data, right? It reads the data and then writes the data. So there is a read, memory read, and there is a memory write. So it can cause a data about. Agree? So swap can cause. Now I'll ask you another question. Can the okay thumb mode? You are not yet aware. So I can make a statement that these apart can happen both. Both in ARM mode and thumb mode. Please remember. Okay, doesn't matter which mode it is. Maybe the bit of the data code access the code access may be different, but it can happen in both the modes. So these are the ways a data about can happen. Okay, in thumb mode there are other instructions which which is not listed here, so I will not confuse you now. But please remember these are the instructions. Are there any other instructions which access the data in the memory? I don't think so. If you remember, let me know. So these are the instructions which cause. So that also happens only when they are in the execute stage of the pipe in the pipeline. Please remember that. Okay. So when the contents of the virtual address page is not available, so again MMU related stuff. So keep in mind it could happen because of some page missing. Uh, we will come back to this. So whenever an instruction uh, data about okay. Especially when data about happens, the about handler does something. Okay, recovers the instruction, tries to execute the same instruction again. That is what I'm saying. Restarted. Suppose LDM has caused a data about. So I told you that it will come in incomplete instruction. It will be incomplete, and then it will come to the about handler. About handler does something, and then comes back to the same location to try executing the instruction again. Okay. So it is because maybe because of some memory is not available, some page is not available, so it can be recovered and then the same instruction can be tried out. So that's what I'm saying. Restarted the same instruction can be restarted. So so the uh, you have to you know you the about handler has to save the proper value to come back and execute the instruction. Okay, that is in the hands of the about uh, handler. Okay, handler only has to decide where it has to come back and execute the next instruction rather than. Uh, Same instruction or the next one is decided by the handler based on the situation. Okay, interrupt is used by external hardware. So, but is which instruction will be executed when you have this? Okay, interrupt. Okay, let me explain. Uh, you have a processor here. I told you that interrupts are coming from outside world, IRQ or maybe FIQ. It is executing the code now. I told one difference between abort and except interrupt is whatever is being executed is completed and ISR is responded to. What I mean by ISR responded to vector table is there interrupt vector table. It goes to the IRQ or FIQ to the handler. Okay, handler gets executed or ISR and then handler after handler getting executed. It returns the control returns back to the instruction which is next to the previous instruction at which the interrupt happened. Okay, so this is completed. Anyway, I said that when interrupt happens, the process of completes the execution. So it is supposed to now execute the next instruction. As if nothing has happened, it should the control flow should have carry on with what it was doing. So after the handler, it should come back here. So please remember to handle the interrupt. After the handler is done, the control comes back. You know, you are supposed to make the controller come back to this next instruction. Whereas in the exception handler, you may decide to come back to the same instruction. Okay? Why do you think on interrupt you are to come to the next instruction? Because you don't want to execute the same instruction again. Okay? If you do it again, the the behavior will be totally different. What the programmer intended and what happens will be totally different. Take an example. Suppose you have put a instruction called add R1, comma immediate zero two. Okay. 
this was the instruction which was being executed and interrupt happened. Now R1 has been added with 2, so R1 was having some value earlier 10 and then it has become 12 now. It has executed this instruction and then went to interrupt. Now after the interrupt if it comes back to the same location what will happen? It will get incremented again which was not intended by the programmer. So it should not execute the same instruction when interrupt happens. It should come come to the next instruction following this. Those are the normal flow happens. Okay, so please remember that. So that's the way interrupts are handled. Okay, and then it can only be raised if IRT. Okay, one more thing is if you remember there was a CPSR register. There was a Two bits, okay. I think if I remember, zero to five, okay, is more bits, okay. And then some more bit, t bit, and this is fi q bit, and this is the ir q bit. Uh, this is bit bit zero, bit six, bit seven. Oh, sorry, okay, this is four. Uh, wrong. This is four. This is five, and this is six. And this is seven bit seven. That means eight bits. Okay. So if this particular bit in which one, which is this CPSR. Okay. If this bit is one, that means even if FIQ signal is given to the processor, processor will ignore it. I don't care about that interrupt. I will continue with whatever I am doing. If this disabled, if it is enabled, then the interrupt can be will be processed by the processor if the signal comes ok. So, so you can control the whether to respond to interrupt or not by setting this bits or clearing the bits. So, that is what I am saying it will be right if IRT and FIQ are not masked in the CPSR ok. I hope it is clear to you let us go. Now, I explained you already ok what are the different modes of this different exceptions and interrupts. So, I have any set executes in uh, supervisor mode and then SWR also software interrupt or reset both execute in supervisor mode abort both prefetch and data abort goes to abort mode FIQ is FIQ mode IRQ mode and undefined is undefined there is a separate mode. So, why I am very particular about saying this thing because you should know that which bank will be visible on which interrupt. So, if you remember FIQ mode has more registers in it FIQ mode. So, that means you do not have to save those registers because new set of registers are I, I, I registers are visible in the FIQ mode. So, you can use them freely without getting worried about the user mode previously whatever was the register those registers will not be impacted when you are using this in the those modes. I will explain them clearly in the when I am handling the abort handler right now this is what it means ok very good. Now, relative priorities these are the relative priorities. So, reset is the highest priority. So, I told you that even if any instruction is getting executed it will not be completed the reset will be answered immediately. So, this is more important and data about is the next higher priority and FIQ IRQ are the you know priority wise. So, what do I mean by the relative priorities? A relative priority of exceptions are given above multiple exceptions interrupts can happen at the same time. Please remember it is not that anybody outside the world or the instruction being executed are aware of anything happening with the other part of the things. So, IRQ is happening independent of IRQ event is happening independent of FIQ event. So, they can all happen at the same time that is the worst case scenario. So, our the abort can happen also simultaneously. So, everything can happen together. Okay, but some things are mutually exclusive, which are mutually exclusive. Uh, a prefetch abort and a data abort can it happen together at the same time. See, remember a memory is accessed, right? Either data is accessed at a time, you agree, it's of on an architecture, right? Or a code is accessed, prefetch. The memory when you are accessing it either you are doing a data access or a code access. So, when will the actual abort happen during the actual you know the memory unit MMU memory memory or not memory system informs the CPU that a hey, there is an abort 
so that abort signal is generated based on either a memory read or a write it could be for data or it could be for code but it cannot happen together right so they cannot happen the event cannot be generated by the memory for both okay so that's what i'm trying to say that but something you know during this time an irq can come there is no uh, there is no relationship between when irq is generated and when abort has, has happened or the processor may be executing swi instruction and that time a fiq can come so these fiqs irqs and the subbots can all happen together so when these things happen together how will the processor know which one to act on first because i told you that there are vector table and then the processor can do only one job at a time okay you can access either a, a fiq handler or you can go to the irq handler or it can go to swi handler you can't go to everything so it has to resolve at that particular moment the clock which one should i look at so it is actually hardwired okay the priority of relative priority of each so the processor knows when there is a reset signal given there is a data of what happening and the fiq happens and irq happens it will honor this okay it will ignore them all okay sometimes if reset is not there it is other things are happening it will not ignore them it will wait these subbots will wait and maybe the first one will be acted upon and then after it is done with that job it will come and act on this and that only so there will be some sequence followed so that sequence is what is given by the priority given here okay that's why I, what what i mean by relative priority um or while one is being handled another one might happen see please remember when it is in fiq handler there is it can happen nobody can prevent it or even fiq handler itself okay fiq handler is doing a memory read and it creates a data abort or it is fetching the handler code and it results in a pre fetch abort so while one hand one exception is being handled another one can be generated so during that time this relative priority will resolve how the processor is supposed to respond to so if during this fiq data abort happens it will respond to it whereas if uh, pre fetch abort happens it will wait for okay it's a very mixed uh, thing okay here though it's low priority if you are not able to access the code you cannot complete the uh, handler so it it will know which one to respond to suppose if it is irq handler uh, uh, interface happen when it is being handled it will not respond to irq until the handler is done with that and irq will be enabled and then it will do so these things i will explain you in detail when i am handling the how to write handlers for all of them okay but have this idea in back of the mind uh, it will help lower priority exceptions are handled only after the high priority exceptions are handled okay now i am just give, going to give a brief uh, idea about how to call how the handlers are called okay from the interpreter okay interpreters are there and then you are calling the handler i told you right this is vector table and then by each location you are calling the handler now how what is the instruction you are supposed to put i showed you some branch instruction but there are different ways you can pass the control back to the handler control back. so there are number of ways an execution can be transferred to start the inter handler using one of the instructions in the vector table see how many instruction can be there only one instruction because if you recall the vector tables are all only one four bytes are reserved for each other so only one instruction can be there so you have to transfer the control to the handler in one instruction you can't have multiple instructions then you will be writing into the adjacent neighboring vector so that is not correct so it is one instruction so this you are aware the branch instruction okay is it correct right? link okay um, we will not worry about this now but you will not normally use the link register here just a branch okay you don't want to come back okay i'll explain you why bl is not normally used um, this is a vector irq vector suppose okay you are free to use b to the handler branch to handler or bl to handler bl to handler means what you will say that the next instruction i i will put it in the link register right but in this case if you are not executing a normal subroutine flow right then you want the control to come back after the subroutine is called here is an interrupt 
So you don't want the next vector, uh, you know, one one inter paragraph, and you don't want to execute all the you know service service routines of other inter. So you will not put a BL. You will put a B, and anyway, this inter is handled in a different way than I you know uh, normal branch to link. Okay. So you can have a branch instruction to come to handler. That's why I mentioned a branch instruction, not a branch with a link instruction. Okay. So you can put a move instruction also. So uh, what they oh sorry uh, okay see how do I put a move instruction so I can say move pc comma some location okay uh, I can put a a byte address okay a byte shifted value if you recall the uh, instruction format I have mentioned you can mention a byte value okay um, which will be rotated by no. If you suppose you have mentioned it uh, 4 bit value and then it will be multiplied by 2 and then that many rotation ROR will be done and then that particular value will be loaded into the register right. So there was a instruction byte shifted instruction even number of bits it will be rotated. So that you can use if it if you can place your handler in a fixed location then that constant can be if you can generate that constant you can use that otherwise we may have to use a different instruction. Um, based on where the ISR is located. Otherwise, you can choose L LDR. LDR is with respect to PC. See, it is very simple here. See, current PC anyway. You know, if you are IRQ vector, you know what is the fixed location of IRQ vector. So that PC value, you know, current PC value, or maybe it will be because of prefetch. It may be plus four or plus eight. Okay, yes, it will be plus eight anyway. Normally, see. Please remember the prefetch does not know whether it is accessing the um, interpreter or not. Once this uh, branch, whatever you are writing here, this instruction is uh, put on, it will start doing that same plus 4 plus 8. Okay. So, when it is doing it, you will be able to, based on the PC value, you can put the offset and then locate it somewhere closer to the current PC. That is why I told you that ISR, uh, ISRs are written very close to the vector table. Okay. So that the plus or minus 32 anyway you know you have pulpit offset so it is a little lower than the 32 range but you can anyway access the code okay. So you can with respect to PC you can add an offset why only add is mentioned here because anyway already in this vector table is at the lower address so you can't go below this right you can't go below so you have to go up only so you have to put a positive offset only which will be sitting somewhere in the memory higher than the vector table ok. So, you can use this instruction also to transfer the control to the handler please remember these are the instructions which can be used to transfer the control from the vector table to the handler that is what I am trying to say here ok. Very good now what all things the processor does when it is handling the exception the current extension instruction being executed is completed I told you that. If the current instruction is a multi cycle instruction, it is completed before responding to the inter. It does not matter whether multi cycle, whether LDM or LDR, it does not matter, or just an add, does not matter. That instruction will be done. Please remember when there is an exception or interrupt, you do not have a control on which instruction is being executed at the time the interrupt or exception happens, ok. Especially interrupts, you do not have a uh, clue. When IRQ will be generated or FIQ will be generated, you do not have any clue, ok. And uh, when is, which instruction is executed? So, any instruction could be there at the time where the IRQ happens. So, but the processor will sincerely execute this instruction fully and then only look at the IRQ or FIQ, ok. And that is what I am trying to say. So, if you want to reduce the latency, what I mean by latency? Suppose the hardware. Uh, I told you the timer or a serial port is generating an interrupt, it would have generated at particular time t, as that it is t is equal to 0, that is our clock starting, ok. But the processor will take its own time, sweet time, because it is currently executing this LDM instruction, which is a 16 volts of transfer. So, it will complete it and then when only it will realize that oh, oh there is an IRC which has come in. So, let me go to the vector table, ok and then let me access this branch instruction or move whatever you have put in and then go to the ISR. So, 
there is a finite time elapsed from the time that signal actual hardware signal of IRQ or FAQ has, has been generated and the time at which the first instruction of the ISR is executed ok. So, it has, it has to wait for this current execution to be done then it has to put it has to do some saving of some values which I will explain you and then access this instruction it has come to the pipeline and then gets executed then only it will come to the ISR and then fetch the first instruction and then start executing it. So, lot of time is elapsed and that is the called interlatency. latency. So, this clock cycles how many clocks it takes for responding to an interrupt means how responsive your system is going to be. It is like when I say that there is a fire alarm and I have connected the fire alarm to FIQ ok and this ARM processor your embedded system is supposed to switch off the uh, you know remove the control to all the access to the door and then switch on the fire extinguisher. So, that fire extinguishers are activated and then switch on the alarm. So, that you know there is a hoot sound. So, that the incumbent the, the people who are inside the office can escape or take action on the fire. Now, that time you know how important it is to have this latency to be lower. You cannot take few seconds or even you know uh, to respond to this and then activate all these alarms and then inform the uh, people who are in the building. So, the latent latency is very important. So, especially when there is a uh, controller which is controlling your car engine or it is controlling your brake system it has to respond it in a few microseconds or preferably much earlier than that. So, the number of clocks decides how fast the processor can respond to your external events. So, you have to take care of it when you are designing your system accordingly. Data about generated if LDR or SDR is encounter a problem which I explained you already ok we will have a detailed discussion on this later on. Now, one more point I want to highlight here when these different abouts are happening what happens to the IRQ and I bit I mentioned to you in the CPSR there are two bits which are maintained if you remember bit 7 and bit 6 ok now I remember it. So, this is the FIQ bit and this is the IRQ bit ok. So, these bits are set that means those particular interrupt is disabled. So, when the reset happens both interrupts are disabled ok. So, please once the reset is the highest priority and then you want to do a you no know, recovery. So, all the abouts all the interrupts are disabled. So, IRQ is FIQs are disabled whereas, if you are processing a data about though it is higher priority than fast interrupt fast interrupt is not disabled it is uh, sorry this is not disabled it is enabled. If you are if you are in the FAQ itself you are processing the FAQ then FAQ is disabled and IRQ is also disabled because it is a lower priority than the FAQ. So, that is disabled if you are in IRQ if you are already servicing in IRQ the you no know, subsequent IRQ is disabled ok. Similarly, if you are here ok the I bit is set ok when you are into the abort. So, inside the ISR you may have to handle this and then enable them based on the priority ok. So, that I will be explaining you later, but this is how the default the processor does it and then ISR handler should they undo it after taking some action ok it do performing some operations in the abort handler ok. So, when an exception is right disabling of IRQ FAQ is done automatically by the processor on entering the exception handler ok. So, what all the code does? The CPSR is saved with the SPSR mode what I mean by that? See you are in a assume that you are in user mode executing our user code the IRQ happens ok. Then this current execution is done and then the next instruction is to be fetched, but you know it is it is to be executed, but it does not execute this instruction it goes to IRQ handler. So, while doing that it has got a CPSR right. So, it see when I say that when you come back after the ISR is executed to this location ok next instruction it should go as as if nothing has happened in between ok. 
when you are executing this instruction after that this instruction, but in between the ISR has come and then you have come back from there. If the you do not want any impact of that then you have to make sure that CPSR is also not disturbed, why because you have a in ISR you may write a move as ok, you may do a add yes which will impact the CPSR flags ok or you may do some other operation which will impact the mode bits of the processor ok, because you are going to IRQ vector that means the user mode to IRQ mode you are going, so the mode bits will be affected, so condition bits flags will be affected. So, this I would know as a user I do not want this to be impacted at all because of some interrupt coming in between. So, how does the process take care of it? It it knows that there is a stored SPSR available in that mode to which it is going, it copies the CPSR into that. So, after you handle the ISR, you restore it back, ok. You mean the handler copy the SPSR of that mode to CPSR and then pass the control to the this location. Now, you see as if nothing has happened the code is executing now the flags are same as how it was earlier. So, from the programmer perspective or from the user pers the program perspective there is no impact of this impact happening that will happen only when the CPR is very saved and restored back after you come back from the ISR. So, it is very important to save them ok that is what the processor does. I will explain the reason for that I hope it is clear to you. One more uh, simple thing you should remember is it is always the exceptions are handled in arm state again you do not know the arm or thumbs mode means arm the exceptions are handled at 32 bit instead ok that is all simple it does not treat them as 16 bit always the exceptions are in arm mode. And then it does the CPSR because you saw in the previous slide I showed that IRQ is you know disabled in all the exceptions. So, it has been it disables IRQ, it disables FIQ if it is FIQ or insert, and all the other places FIQ is not disabled because we do not want a fast interrupt to be disabled because that is more critical interrupt is attached to that, ok. As a system designer, you are supposed to make sure that FIQ is what is connected to a a critical module, it could be a timer or it could be a, a sensor, ok. This arm, so you have to make sure that FIQ is connected to the most critical interrupt module, which will indicate to the processor that yeah, please take a immediate action. So, that is why FIQ is not disabled until uh, you know, except for FIQ and reset. And then, one more thing is I told you that it will come back to the location, how will it come back until it saves it right. This PC value ok R15 is saved in the LR, see it is not actually saving this instruction it is plus, this plus 8 because when this is executed PC would have advanced to plus 8 already ok. Please remember it would have already uh, gone to plus 8 ok. So, this PC value is stored in the LR, LR of what? LR of that particular mode. If IRQ is the cause of the interrupt, you know that there is a bank R13 and R14 of IRQ mode, ok. In that LR, the R14 is LR register. So, of that mode, ok, of that mode, the value uh, who does it? Processor does it. It stores the PC current PC value into that. So, the handler has to take remember this and then come back load the PC back into back with this value. So, that control comes back to the code which was being executed ok, uh, it should adjust it such a way that it comes back. So, it will become clear to you when I am explaining about, but remember this is what done by the processor ok. This steps are very important, please understand this read out and then make it you under make sure that you understand this properly ok. So, it sets the CPSR to the exception mode. So, it saves the CPSR first which will have the old mode what was there and then it changes the CPSR because current mode is controlled by the value in CPSR. Please remember the current mode of the processor is controlled by the mode bit here not on the SPSR ok. SPSR is visible based on which mode you are in, but the mode bit here does not have a control on the processor's status. 
So processor mode status is controlled by the mode between CPSR. So what you do is current mode you copy into the SPSR and then change it so that to reflect that you are in the IRQ mode or FIP mode. Okay. And then PC is addressed by exception handler. Now I interpret a table the 0 to C one of the addresses will be loaded into the PC so that the control goes to that location that is all. With this I think we are done with the most of the discussion. So let us see whether you are able to understand this quiz take a 5 minutes break ok come back. Okay, welcome back. Tell me what happens. What is the all access interrupts are handled only in ARM state? I told you that it all is all handled in ARM state. Why? Are you clear with the answer? Though you do not know about ARM, you know that it is a 16 bit, the thumb mode is a 16 bit instructions. So, the answer is D, ok. The reason being. Please remember the vector table is only one in the processor, ok. Vector table is only one which is at the location from this one 0 to C 1 C or whatever. You have a you have you know as a programmer or as a system developer you have to fill in some instruction here agree. So, that branch instruction whatever you are putting or move instruction you have to decide whether you are going to put a 32 bit or 16 bit because if it has to be supporting in uh, supported in uh, thumb mode you have to put a 16 bit instruction. So, when you have only limit one only one place and then you have to put the you know uh, branch instructions here based on which interrupt is happening. One thing you have to remember when the interrupt happens ok IRQ or exception or whatever happens you do not have any control on which instruction is being executed by the ARM processor. Not only that you do not have a control on which process which instruction is executed you do not have a control on which mode it is in which whether it is in ARM state or it is in a thumb state. It may be executing a thumb instruction or it may be executing an ARM instruction. ARM instruction means 32 bit wide thumb instruction means 16 bit wide that is all you have to know. So, some through some means of CPSR you have you are you are changing the mode of the processor and it is in thumb mode it is executing 16 bit instruction. Now, interrupt happens now suppose if you say that I want you know every uh, ISR handler or the record table it should be independent of ARM or thumb mode then what happens suppose ARM processor continues to be in thumb mode ok and then tries to access the record table it will interpret this instruction as a 2 16 bit instruction is not it it want interpret it as a 132 bit instruction then what it will con, uh, conclude from it something else not what the programmer intended. So, that is the confusion right what you store here you can decide to put either 32 bit instruction or a 16 bit instruction you cannot have both if you have if you want to have both you have to change it whenever the mode changes you have to come and re, you know re, re, reload it with something else which will be time consuming and it is not suitable for a a real time system or another option is this are one more table which will be a 16 bit mode table ok that is another option. But so the processor will not I am in thumb mode so let me go to this particular table and then access this then what happens this handler also should be in thumb mode. So, effectively you will be managing two things both handler as well as the table and lots of confusion right. So, and it is actually in, in, uh, impacting the performance of the system. So, ARM the rightly decided the designer that all the exceptions interrupts everything will be handled in ARM mode irrespective of whether the current mode of the processor is 32 bit or 16 bit mode or thumb mode or ARM mode. That means, it will remember because you are saving the CPSR into SPSR. So, that CPSR has a T bit there. So, you can come back after the vector after the handler is done you can come back to the previous mode that you are executing. So, the thumb instruction or arm instruction it will not get impacted at all please remember that only thing is when it is jumping to the handler it is in the arm mode whether it was in thumb mode or arm mode 
both will execute the handler exception vector everything in arm mode so that is what is the reason why it can't be done okay so now you can only you already read it so you can read this again that means only one vector can be can be managed and then it has to be done by one more only okay now you have one more quiz take another 5 minutes maybe it may need less than that but no harm take little more time don't you discuss and then come back welcome back i hope you may have noticed the reason correctly okay yes it is a e why see the above the vector vector table is 0 to 1 c it is not reserved for any other purpose okay this location so instead of putting a branch and then going somewhere i can execute the faq handler here itself what is the advantage i get the branch is a waste actually you know it's it actually takes the control to something and then only actual job is done that in the handler so effectively it wastes lots of cycle because you know pipeline because of that so you can as well write the code here itself so the reason is that why the other reasons are not making sense all other exception handler need memory space where fi2 handler normally needs a few words this is not true everybody needs space in you can't say no the program as a developer system developer you may decide to put a, a long routine in the fi2 you are not supposed to do a long execution there but it is all depends on the program whether you are permitting a which particular peripheral to fi2 interact so you cannot decide on this okay Uh, only if you need faster response time, others don't. It's not. It's not true with either. Reset needs a much faster response too because that is the highest priority. Okay. But why it is not put here? You are saying that reset is the highest priority, but we have put FAQ here to put the handler just after the uh, table. Why? Because reset is a very catastrophic event. once this happens you have to react to it immediately but it is going to take its own sweet time to complete the initialization handler and the, all the job that you need to do so it is it is much more than you know this one branch instruction okay whereas faq is going to be more frequently at, you know encountered when you have uh, your system running in that uh, processor so you want a faster response for the faq than a or reset that's the reason why they chose that faq has to be in the top execution of exception handler will be slower if all the handlers are placed in the vector table that is not true it is not that you if you execute from the vector table it will be slow it is the, the real problem is how will you how much of space i need to allocate for irq then after leaving out some space i had to put a handler for this so if i decide that the that vector table is split into multiple things it is like a fragmented space and you don't know how much space to reserve so that's why they put all the table in one place left to the programmer to design where i assert so so this is also not a valid reason okay very good let us okay this is very simple reset on this signal can be generated either on power on okay or on recall error on receiving this signal okay this is what is done on receiving this signal okay let me explain you this you you may get a reset signal from any anywhere okay you may be in any mode Okay, I am taking an example where user mode you are executing, your uh, program is executing, and then a reset has happened. Reset is having a two registers. Okay, in the reset mode, the uh, reset is a uh, if you remember, it is a supervisor mode, right? So it has got a SPSR as well as um, R14, and R13 is also there. R14 is there. It is a link register. So this particular register is loaded with the instruction okay current instruction being or not the current instruction the pc plus 8 okay you are executing this instruction plus 8 is what pc is the that is stored here okay immediately that is stored and then it jumps to the reset okay vector okay and then more bits are changed to supervisor mode and both are disabled if you remember i told you this c bit is also cleared why 
because all the exceptions are handled in ARM mode. Please remember, it cannot be executed in thumb mode. So reset can happen when the processor is already in a thumb mode. That time three bit would have been no clear. So it is reset. Okay, uh, so it is not in thumb mode, and then forces the PC to fetch the address zero zero. That is the reset location vector uh, location. So after all. After the reset, all register except the PC and CPS are indeterminate because PC you are loading with the value, okay, and CPS are more bit you are setting, okay, uh, and T bit also you are setting. So that's why it has a meaningful value. Very good. Now, one more quiz for you before we end the class. Uh, please take, think it over, five minutes again, one more five minutes break. We'll come back now. Now this also option is A. Okay. Why? See when the reset signal is generated. Maybe as a diagnostic purpose, you want to know when the reset happened in the handler. Maybe if it is a power on, it is coming up for the first time. You know, it may not make sense. But if you can sense that the reset has happened not because of power on, but it, you know, maybe you may have an external security or some more bit to say in the system. Then you want to know what I was doing at the last, you know, just prior to the reset signal key, whether it was doing some which operation. So if it, it was required, if it is required by the handler, then this value which is stored in the SPSR and R14 of the SCC mode can be used. Okay, I hope it is clear to you. It is only just a diagnostic purpose, nothing else. So what all reset handler does? No, on entering reset, you do the following: set up other exception vector table entry. So first time, suppose it is power on. Remember, the memory is having no value, valid value. So vector table has to be initialized with a branch to the ISR. ISR needs to be loaded in the memory. Please remember, RAM is not loaded when the processor comes up. So it has to be vector table has to be initialized. All the program has to be loaded in the memory. Okay, and then the peripherals have to be set, you know, programmed to a particular value. Timer, if it has to run, it has to be programmed to run, and then, you know, actual code where it is supposed to run. All those things needs to be done. So that is done by, you know, what? Then you may wonder uh, if it is not set, what will happen to the zero? Who will set the value with the reset vector? That's a good question. So I will tell you what that means. Normally in a system, then this is the ARM system SOC. Okay. You what you normally as a system programmer do is you put a ROM or a flash, okay, which is a which will have the contents even when the power is lost and then when power comes. So initially to start with, maybe the address the zero x will be pointing to the okay location which is already loaded with some value which could be a ROM location, okay. Later on, you may use a MMU or a, you know, some circuitry to con change this to a RAM location. Okay, uh, this will involve some more knowledge on how the different memories are handled in the power system, real system. But for a moment, you can think that in a system, uh, embedded system, on reset, the first reset vector and the code has to be loaded first. It should be available in the RAM, and then what will happen is this code in the RAM. Will inform the processor to copy it into the RAM because accessing the code from RAM and running it from the RAM is faster. And then you can also write into data area, you have to keep it in the RAM only. So they are all done in a RAM. So the initial code will be in ROM or a flash, and then after that, the control is um, taken to the RAM, and then the whole thing comes up. So that is why. You know, always the first location the reset vector table will be ready. So it will initialize the memory controllers. It will initialize the MMU and cache if it is there. And then the reset controller has to do a stack for each processor. Okay, each mode there is a R13. I said R13 is a stack pointer. Each mode. Okay, they will all have different stack. Okay, uh, I will explain about the stack later on in more detail when I am handling the abort. Right now, you assume that the reset handler does the Initialization of each of the R13 of each mode. Each mode is having R13 and they will be initialized to valid stack value. Okay. That means it's an address allocated for the stack of the particular mode. So all the de devices have to be initialized and then 
copy program from into RAM from flash or ROM I told you and then after that only you should enable inter because if you enable inter before initializing the record table the thing what happens when it comes to record table it does not find the you know, proper branch instruction it will generate another prefetch apart which will not have its own thing then the system will never come up. So, you have to do all this before we uh, enable the interrupts. So, to start with it will be disabled and then it will be enabled after that in the interrupt handler ok. And then user mode or it will go to user mode or a system mode as uh, as you intend to do that ok. This is what normally done on a reset handler ok. It is not if you understand this much but later on maybe if it time permits we will talk more about this ok. So, so, we are come to an end of the class uh, today. So, we have handled most critical modules what are the tables how they are uh, the ISRs are enabled and how different you know banks are used for the vector table and what are different instructions you can use to jump from vector table to the ISR or handler and then what are the functions handled by the region ok. So, with this um, we will um, no, we will talk to you in the next class have a nice day thanks for your attention bye bye.